Hey there, and welcome back to XCOM. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our XCOM Enemy Within Iron Man Impossible walkthrough. In the last episode, we took down a supply barge for the first time. We also purchased our first suits of Titan armor, unlocking the Man No More achievement, and we got our Assault Luisa Santoso one step closer to the rank of Colonel. Now, from that supply barge mission, we also made a decent amount of cash, even though I forgot to sell an alien surgery. So, let us actually start today's episode off by building a new facility. Believe it or not, we still have not yet built a single laboratory, a facility that is available from the very beginning of the game. For the price of 62 credits and 3 units of power, we can construct one, and it will provide us with a 20% increase to research speed. The whole process will take 10 days, but I think we can stomach that, not to mention that financially we can more than afford it. And for that reason, we will actually build a second laboratory right next to the first one here, just so that our research team works even faster. With the two facilities adjacent to each other, we get another 10% increase to research speed, so in 10 days we will have a total bonus of 50%. And while we do still have a bit of space, we also don't have money issues in the slightest at the moment, so we can excavate that last building spot as well now. Afterwards, we then make a quick stop in the foundry, where we purchase the improved medikit. So far, we have not really needed medikits in combat, but especially in this game, it is better to be prepared, so let's spend 62 additional credits to improve our healing abilities by 2 hit points per medkit. I'll make sure production begins immediately, and as soon as we've got something, I'll be in touch. And that is all the prep work we have to do for today. At this point, we can now finally start scanning. Commander, we've got another transmission coming in from the Council. Alright, looks like our next mission is going to be a Council mission. And not just any Council mission. We are continuing the storyline of Annette and Operation Progeny with Furies. It appears as if Annette was not the only human captive the aliens were interested in, as we have discovered the location of three more potentially gifted abductees. It is of course of vital importance that the aliens do not complete that transfer, so let's launch the mission and see what we can do to help. Excellent. We look forward to seeing your progress. Right, so for this mission we are making some changes to our squad. Specifically, we will remove mech trooper Nicholas Mahoney. In his place, we will put our psionic heavy Kim Lupai, so we will hopefully be able to get our first taste of psionic abilities in action today. To better protect Kim, we will also switch our assault Adam work back to the skeleton suit. His titan armor can now go on Miss Lupai. Apart from that, we will also give her a heavy laser, but leave the rest of the equipment as it is. I briefly thought about buying some combat stims for her, but the will bonus those provide sadly do not extend to psionic abilities, and a second alien grenade might allow her to get another much-needed kill instead. Now, one last thing, with the removal of Nicholas from the squad, our squad leader situation is not ideal at the moment. That role is currently occupied by Heavy Andrea Cook with a will of only 68, and that is much lower than Nicholas's 90. And while we also have Assault Luisa Santoso here with a will of around 85, I think, she is unfortunately not eligible as a squad leader because she's still a major and not yet a colonel. But that's only one more reason to level her up quickly, so let's see what we can do in the field. Strike One needs to approach that ship with caution. According to Annette, the remaining captives are being held in stasis, but the aliens can shut down life support functions at any moment. The system is controlled by a command console. If we can take it out, it'll give us a chance to bring those people home safe. Objectives updated. All right, so here we are at the mission site. In front of us, we have an alien ship currently still in the shadows, and somewhere on that ship, there are three captives that we have to free. To no one's surprise, we will of course meet some resistance along the way, and once we reveal our presence, the aliens might react accordingly. So for the moment, let us stay hidden here with Adam and scout ahead. Moving in designated coordinates. Okay, so now we see at least the faint outlines of the UFO, and unfortunately there is really not a lot of full cover between here and there, so scouting with Adam might be a bit more difficult than usual, which is why we're now employing the services of Resilius and his battle scanner. Scanners up and running. 
All right, looks like we have a nest of thin men near the entrance to the ship. That should not be too difficult to deal with. But for the rest of this turn, we want to remain hidden. So let's move the rest of our squad up just a few tiles, and then we can put everyone on overwatch. And there we go, no action on the alien's turn, the three thin men are still in the same spot, so let's get them going with a guaranteed kill from Resilius. Wonderful, that is one thin man down, the other two have now moved into cover, not really knowing what hit them. And that also shows in how they chose their cover, as we will now have an easy time flanking both of them. Before we do that, however, let us move up with our psionic heavy Kim Lupai, who gets close enough to have them both in shooting and with that also in mind fray range. Now you can see here the chance to hit with a mind fray is 72%, and that chance is dictated by Kim's will score. That will score, by the way, is currently substituted for that of our squad leader Andrea, but as I already mentioned, that one isn't too high either, resulting in a good but not great 72% chance to hit. Now, if the ability hits, it will do 5 points of damage, and with both Thin Men having 6 hit points, we will hold off on the Mind Fray for now anyway. We want to keep in mind, though, that to gain psionic experience, we don't actually need to kill with the ability, we just need to hit it successfully. Getting a kill, however, would of course be nice for Kim's overall rank progression, so that is what we're aiming for. However, Kim is not the only one in need of kills, and because of that we have moved Louisa into a flanking position, from where she should be able to take out another thin man. Excellent, so that leaves us only with one more enemy, and this is now the one that we will try to use Mind Fray on. Since we want to kill with that though, we need to do some damage first, so let's move up Emilia, switch her over to the plasma pistol, and hope she doesn't do too much damage. Okay, despite a 75% chance to crit, she does not get a critical hit here. That now leaves the Thin Man alive with only two hit points. So let's see if Kim can use her first psionic ability successfully. Alright, very nice. There we go, the Mind Fray gets the kill. And with that, the first group of hostiles has been eliminated. More enemies will of course follow, but for now the coast is clear, so let's move up both Adam and Andrea, put Adam on overwatch and then end the turn. Resilius sadly can't make use of his double tap with no more enemies present. Damn it. The aliens are onto you, Strike One. That sound is coming from the console. Get moving and find it before the aliens execute those captives. So, things are starting to get a little more interesting now, because our first encounter with the aliens has officially notified them of our presence, which has in turn now started a 12 round timer. So in 12 turns our three captives will be executed and we will fail the mission, and this is a hard timer, there is no way to extend it. Still, this should not cause us to lose our heads. In my experience, 12 turns is plenty of time even with a careful approach, so let us safely continue scouting here with Adam before we make any rash decisions. And with the next bit of full cover quite a bit of distance away, it does not surprise to find the next group of hostiles here. Once again, we're facing a group of three thin men who have not noticed us yet, and let's keep it that way for a while longer as we move Kim into position. With a rocket on the next turn, she can hopefully get herself three easy kills. The rest of our soldiers will all move up a little bit and then go on overwatch, because stationary aliens are not the only ones we'll face on this mission. And this turn that's coming up, the one after our arrival has been noticed, that is the first one where the enemies will start sending reinforcements. Additional alien contacts approaching strike one's position, commander. So, here we are with an overwatching thin man on our left who for some reason did not get killed, and with a muton berserker right in our middle. We will start things off, however, with the group of three thin men, just as planned with a rocket from Kim Lupai. And that's it, that's the group eliminated nice and easy, and Kim has earned herself a promotion, and that was one of the things I wanted to accomplish on this mission. 
Now for the other thin man, let us switch Resilius back to his sniper rifle, which allows him to get another guaranteed elimination. Since double tap is also usable again, the second shot can then go against the Berserker, which coincidentally also causes the enemy to move closer to our assault Luisa, as a matter of fact, right into the range of her close and personal ability. So the first shot we'll take with her does not cost an action, let's hope she can make it count. Alright, 6 points of damage, leaving the Berserker with 10 HP, and since we can now still use double tap, this should be doable. And here we are, 11 turns left to go, all enemies are down, so let us once again continue scouting. And also once again, Adam immediately finds another group of enemies, and yes, it is another trio of Thin Man. However, they are still pretty far away from the rest of our squad, so let us move up those of our soldiers who can still move. Emilia can even go on Overwatch, but that's pretty much it for this turn. Since we have not yet activated them, the Thin Man do of course stay where they are, and on our last turn we have actually moved Andrea into a pretty good position, so she can now repeat what Kim did earlier. This is of course the easy way out, and I would have preferred to get a few more kills with Luisa or perhaps a mind fray with Kim, but the Thin Man were located in a pretty inconvenient position, and hunting them down individually would have been a lot more difficult. Now, since we have all of our moves left with everyone but Andrea, let us once again send Adam up ahead to scout out the ship, but with the Thin Man taken care of, he does not find another group, so let's move up everyone else as well now. Emilia can actually stay exactly where she is, and Luisa can reload, and that already ends our turn. Alien reinforcements are inbound, Commander. And two turns after the last reinforcements have arrived, we have another wave coming in here. A Thin Man has landed further in the back of the ship, and we also have another Muton Berserker landing on the roof. And yes, that roof is also accessible to us, either by using ladders on the side of the ship or with grappling hooks, but I am personally not the biggest fan of trying to use it to gain an advantage. The spots on the roof where you can actually shoot down at the enemies below are very limited, and especially on this mission, which actually uses a modified, slightly smaller version of the abductor UFO map, I think the roof can safely be ignored. The enemies will eventually come down to us anyway. It looks like the abductees are still alive, but we're not out of the woods yet. We still have to get them out of there. From Annette's description, that has to be the command console. If we're going to save the captives, we'll need to either move in and disable the system or destroy it with explosives. So, by moving up Adam, we have now discovered our three captives in stasis tanks, and we have also located the console that we can use to free them. Doing so will automatically end the mission, at least if no more hostiles are present, but we do still have a few enemies around and also 9 turns left on the timer, so the aliens come first, then the captives. Now, I know I just said that I don't like to go up on the roof in this mission, but we're sending Emilia up there anyway to get visibility on the Berserker. However, we will make sure to put a safe distance between the two, and we will move Emilia into full cover as well, because the Thin Man could also easily jump up here and take a shot at her. Now, down on the ground, we're making just a few small moves forward. So far, the aliens are only aware of Emilia up on the roof and I'd like to keep it that way, which is why we're also telling Adam to hunker down here, so that he does not accidentally reveal himself, for example by shooting at the Thin Man, only to then be mauled to death by the Berserker. And indeed, the Thin Man is making its move up onto the rooftop, and it looks like it is in fact taking aim at Emilia, but luckily, full cover and the defense bonus from her armor are enough to keep us safe. The Muton, meanwhile, takes a different approach and drops down. Adam stays motionless and lets all of that happen, but Resilius has a squad side reaction shot and uses it. After taking 5 points of damage, the Berserker then finishes the turn by jumping down into that small chamber on the left, and at least for now, out of sight. The Thin Man up on the roof, meanwhile, is perfectly visible, and Sprinter Solberg has enough movement to get herself into a flanking position, so let's have her return the favor. Alright, critical hit for the kill, that now only leaves the Berserker, who may or may not actually be the last enemy of the mission, I'm not quite sure about that, but thanks to Adam's mimetic skin, we can do some risk-free scouting and see if we can find it. 
All right, that was easy. Target found and we now still have 20 hit points to work with. Now, I would like to give the kill to Luisa here, but with a simple run-and-gun rapid fire, she won't be able to do 20 points of damage, so let's have Adam help her out. Okay, I will fully admit that was not how I had planned this. I kind of forgot about the fact that the mutant rushing forward would also trigger Adam's close combat specialist. But as you can see, we got lucky nonetheless, because the berserker now has one single hit point left. And this also pretty much guarantees the kill for Luisa, so let's move her in with run and gun and finish this business. And there we go, a pistol shot was enough, no need to waste ammunition here. Let us now move up everyone else and see if the aliens send in more reinforcements. That is not the case, however, which increases my suspicion that we are more or less done with this mission. But then again, it has been a while since I've played this for the last time. So let's get everyone into position here to overlook the stasis tank and the console. If additional enemies drop in, I would expect them to do that here. And with two overwatches, we are at least somewhat prepared. console with explosives is a surefire way to make sure it'll be out of commission for good. And we are now already being reminded of our goal in this mission, which again seems to indicate that there won't be any more enemies appearing. And after two more turns of actionless overwatching, I can in fact confirm that Adam is already up at the console, so let's free those captives and wrap things up. Excellent work out there, Commander. We're reading zeros across the board on that device. Looks like you managed to stop the termination sequence. The odds were against us on this one, and we still managed to pull through. The three remaining captives have been secured, and if we're lucky, we may just have found some new recruits for XCOM. And here we go, mission completed, we have freed the captives and unlocked the Hours Are the Furies achievement. And it is already heavily hinted at here that those three captives could prove themselves to be useful in the future. So I would say, let's return to the base and see what we have brought with us. better get it together or we're gonna mop the floor with them okay first things first kim lupai has been promoted to sergeant she has now received a nickname which we will of course change in just a moment but more importantly we can now pick another ability for her and we'll make this short we have the choice between suppression and shredder rocket and i want kim to mostly follow andrea's footsteps of being an area of effect damage dealing heavy so we are going with the shredder rocket which at least for now still does a comparatively small amount of damage but as kim keeps gaining ranks and we keep unlocking new equipment that will increase in the future now in terms of loot we don't get anything overly spectacular from this mission the two alien surgeries will be sold in just a moment for a small cash boost the rest will perhaps be useful for our engineers and scientists and here we now have it confirmed the three abductees have indeed offered the services as XCOM soldiers and it is also once again heavily hinted at here that they may perhaps be psionically gifted we will be in touch commander I am certain now that Annette was somehow involved in the attack on XCOM headquarters. Her limited memories of the event include details that no one outside of our organization could possibly know. But the question remains, what is it about her that makes her so valuable to the aliens? Well, I think we will find an answer to that question very soon. For now, though, we have actually completed Operation Progeny. This was the last of three missions, Portent, Deluge and Furies. And in just a second, we will take a look at the grand reward. First of all, though, let us sell those alien surgeries we just talked about. For three of them, we get 75 credits, already enough to finance one of the laboratories we built earlier. And with the transaction completed, it is now time to head over to the barracks. Well, not quite. First, we have to do some renaming, so I'll see you back here in just a second. Okay, so let us have a look now at the three soldiers we just rescued, who have of course all been named after patrons in the naming rights tier and above. We start things off with Ryan Gibbons, nicknamed Pickles, a lieutenant level sniper from the USA. From Egypt then we have Lieutenant Thomas Cahill, nicknamed Kazarak, a support and with that somewhat following in Annette's footsteps. 
Also from Egypt, we have Lieutenant Donna Hilton, nicknamed Blood Rose, the female assault we were looking for so eagerly a few episodes ago. Well, now we have two of them. Patron Coffee Fuel Deadlines is also appearing here as Kim Lupai's nickname, CFD, judging from the Pete Complete Discord, that is what he usually goes by anyway. Now let's hand out a few abilities, starting with Sniper Ryan, who I have decided to leave faceless just for the sake of variation. After unlocking Headshot as the first ability, we are going with Squad Sight at the Corporal level. I feel like for snipers that is generally the more useful ability. At the Sergeant level, we are then going with Gunslinger instead of Damn Good Ground, because despite Squad Sight, Ryan here will probably be a bit closer to the action, and being good with pistols certainly helps in that case. At the Lieutenant level, we then go with Disabling Shot over Battle Scanner, simply because a Battle Scanner is not really needed if you have someone with Mimetic Skin in your squad, and believe me, Adam will not remain the only one. This brings us now to support Thomas K. Hill, a man with a prominent haircut, and a man that we will build up as a more offensive-minded support. So at the Corporal level, we are going with Covering Fire to allow reaction shots on enemy attacks, but therefore sacrificing a bit of movement from Sprinter. However, at the Sergeant level, Field Medic is hard to pass up in my opinion. The ability to carry three medkits into battle is immensely useful regardless of soldier build, while sacrificing additional smoke grenade users is not really that big of a loss in my opinion. That is where the healing focus ends, however, because at the Lieutenant level we are going with Suppression, a useful ability against very strong individual units, and those will of course appear in greater numbers as the game progresses. This brings us now to Assault Donna Hilton, who has decided to go with sunglasses, but hey, a bit of flavor hasn't hurt anyone. With her, we are going with aggression at the corporal level. With the option to wear highly protective armor, a more defensive option is not really needed, so we'll grab the bonus to critical hit chance instead. However, we won't go completely overboard on the offensive side of things like we did with Louisa, so no close and personal for the Blood Rose, instead we go with lightning reflexes. At the Lieutenant level, I was then actually briefly considering Flush, simply because it gives a huge aim bonus, which fits quite well for the more mid-range style I have planned for her, but in the end, as you can see, I still went with Rapid Fire, because Flush is simply too unpredictable for my taste. And that's it, you can now see Kim's nickname in action here, but our three new soldiers have properly been taken care of. There is one last thing we have to do though, while we're on the topic of naming things, and that is to rename the Star of Terra medal that we received for the XCOM base defense. And I have of course also picked a patron for this one, Rohan Moore, congratulations, this is now the Star of Rohan. We will not assign a power or give the medal to anyone at this point though, it is only available once in the entire game and we want to make that decision count. So that means we have actually reached the end of the episode. Our next Exalt mission is just one more day away, and so scanning will probably not bring up anything new in the meantime. Before we go though, there are two quick things I want to note about those three recruits we just obtained. First of all, I'm not quite sure if you have noticed that, the three will always have seven hit points. This is regardless of difficulty setting, and with that a decent amount more health than our regular recruits, which makes these guys pretty solid candidates to use in the late game. They will also always be assigned the same classes, so you can more or less prepare for their arrival. Completing this mission will always gain you an assault, a support and a sniper. How those three will eventually fit into our overall strategy, that is still very much undecided. So don't worry, your current favorites will probably not be dethroned anytime soon. And with that being said, let us make the cut in today's episode. Again, the next mission is right around the corner, so I think we have reached a good point to make the cut. If you enjoyed the video, then I would of course be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. And if you want to support the channel further, then you can go ahead and subscribe to stay up to date, or maybe even support the Pete Complete Patreon for a chance to get your name into the game as well. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.